Well, hi there, and Happy New Year. As we've now come into 2024, let me wish you uh, God's richest blessing uh, throughout this year that we have now entered. You know, it's true that Christmas is over, isn't it? So we start to take the decorations down. The house begins to look uh, particularly uh, bare um, with uh, all of the, the tinsel and, and the lights and all the various other uh, bits and pieces that, that make Christmas at our place. Um, it's all gone and the place looks bare again. And Christmas is over uh, for another year. You know, there's such anticipation uh, for Christmas, such preparation. And then it's here and before you know it, uh, it's gone and Christmas is over. In fact, there's maybe quite a bit of debate about when is Christmas really uh, over. You know, for some people they would say, well, it's the 12th day after Christmas and that's when you take the decorations down. And that's when you can truly say traditionally uh, that Christmas is over. Of course, some like their decorations down before the new year comes in and they would say, well, then Christmas uh, is over when new year comes. Some would say it's over when the presents um, have all been unwrapped uh, and opened. Some might say Christmas is over when all that leftover food that you had that was far too much um, has all been eaten. Perhaps others might say it's when the toys have uh, been broken or discarded. For others it might be when uh, family uh, leave again and when the house becomes empty. For others, it's when life returns to normal and we start to get back to some uh, kind of structure again. Of course, in some cultures, today, the 7th of January, uh, is actually Christmas Day. So for them, it's not over yet. In fact, there's even an island in the Shetland Islands, Fula, um, that will have celebrated Christmas yesterday on the 6th of January as they hold to the Julian calendar. And so Christmas for them is really still being celebrated. And yet, despite all of that, the time will come for all when Christmas will be over. It will have passed and it will have gone. And as we do pack away all of the decorations and as the tree is taken down and the nativity scene with the baby Jesus is carefully uh, wrapped up and put away uh, for another year. Is that it over? And if so, what difference has it made to our lives? What difference has Christmas made? Uh, for some, they might have left large bills that perhaps is going to take until next Christmas before they're really properly cleared. For others, the reminder of how much they miss those that are no longer with us or couldn't be with us this season. For others, it's still, it's a disappointment and the disillusionment of what might have been and wasn't. But here's the question. What difference does Christmas really make to us? You know, as we do pack away the decorations, let's not pack away the Lord Jesus and forget all about him until we, as it were, take him back out of the box again at the beginning of next December. You see, the point really is that if Christmas is really about Jesus Christ, then really it's never over. Indeed, the point of Christmas is that Jesus was more than just a baby. He was God as a man. That's really the mystery of Christmas. That's the mystery of his incarnation. That's the mystery of his incoming into this world. He was the one that, to Joseph, it was revealed that he shall be called Jesus, for he shall save his people uh, from their sin. You see, the Lord Jesus came for a purpose, 
We each had a problem of sin. That's really just disobedience to God and it, it separates us from God and it causes that punishment is pronounced upon us. But the Lord Jesus came to save from sin. The Saviour was born in Bethlehem. But you see, the fact he was born didn't make him saviour. The fact he was in a manger has no real impact upon us. That didn't make him saviour. He grew up and he lived a perfect life and he went about doing so much good for others and teaching some great moral lessons through wise counsel. And yet none of that it made him a saviour for us. It was the tree that made him saviour. Not the Christmas tree that uh, we've taken down, but the cross of Calvary where he was lifted up. Lifted up to die there on that cross at Calvary and dying for our sins, he fulfilled the purpose for which he came. And he had power over sin and over death. Yes, he died for sin, but he proved that he had power over sin. When he rose again from the dead, death unable to hold him, him conquering its power. The effects of which remain with us today. And can bring us to a relationship with God, with a bright hope and a glorious future. But you see, we need to come and trust in him. We need to come and acknowledge that when Jesus died on the cross at Calvary, that it was for my sins that he died on the cross. That I have sinned. I am guilty before God who is holy and who is righteous. And yet the Lord Jesus has paid the price for my sins. That through my confession of sins and belief that he died for me, I can have my sins forgiven and go to be with him, with God in heaven in a future day. And so that's the effect that it can have on us. So as we pack away at Christmas, don't pack away Christ, but rather make him Lord of your life and trust in him for salvation. Thank you very much for listening. May God bless his word to you today.